So the Petro nerfs, let's talk about them today. But first, let me know what you think about them in the comments down below. I'd really like to hear what you guys have to say about the more recent Petro nerfs. Personally though, I don't think they're quite enough yet. I think there's a few things that are just too good about the Petro still. For those of you who didn't know, this ship was raised out of the water a couple patches ago, and in the most recent patch, we got another nerf to its armor this time. Its upper belt and uh, the deck armor as well was nerfed from 50 millimeters down to 40 millimeters. So basically allowing certain HE shells on heavier cruisers to full pen. That's about it. Instead of shattering, you're going to get full pens out of some of these uh, heavy cruisers at tier 10. The armor piercing, though, really can't get through this armor any better than it could before, right? Shikishima was the ship with most overmatch in the game, and that caps out at 35 millimeters, which is not enough to overmatch Petro, which means we can still stay bow in and be incredibly difficult to deal with. That's really my main issue with Petro, is it's just too difficult to deal with. The ship is so hard to kill, and that is why it's not in clan battles, it's not in Kings of the Sea, Oftentimes, this ship is just outright banned. It is just not allowed in these game modes because it defines the meta completely otherwise. Because a ship that can't die with a really good long range radar is just too good when used in conjunction with teammates. So that's why, if you didn't know, it is often banned out of Kings of the Sea and clan battles. It's just too good at cap control and being so aggressive and not dying. The other reason, on top of the incredible armor that this ship has, that I still think is good enough to tank, and obviously it is as I'm playing it in open water here, uh, not really caring who shoots at me and taking very little damage, the armor is still amazing. But in combination with the concealment, this ship is just very, very difficult to kill. In this scenario, I'm really not worried about staying spotted here because I know I can go dark at any time. I'm spotted because I'm shooting. That is the only reason I'm spotted here. If, for example, they get some lucky salvos into our bow, which we'll talk about that weakness a little later, um, it is not a big deal because I can always go dark here, get undetected, and back off from this situation. That is the luxury of a ship like the Petro. And if there was a destroyer trying to spot me, I could always radar him. If I'm permanently spotted, there's only around a half a kilometer window that that destroyer can be operating in where he won't be spotted by my radar. That's the problem here. It's such a difficult ship to spot, and even when it is spotted, it's very, very difficult to do damage to. That's my issue, and that's why I personally think that there should be some concealment nerfs to the Petro, not just nerfs to its height in the water and some of the armor values for mainly high explosive damage. That's my main issues with this ship. Personally though, I think the guns are pretty atrocious. You're gonna see that all throughout this video. The guns reload slowly, they don't do very much damage because they have such poor dispersion. You need to be very close for them to be remaining effective. They do have insane pen and some improved pen angles. So it's not like they're bad. This ship is just not the damage output damage dealer that we would see at a tier 10 cruiser level that, uh, well, a lot of ships are better at dealing damage at long range, especially compared to this ship. But that's not why it needs nerfs. It needs nerfs because it's just too difficult to deal with. And hopefully Wargaming is going to look at the concealment. I would really, really like for them to nerf the concealment by at least a kilometer. I think that would be a good thing for the Petro personally. But again, let me know what you think in the comments down below. In this game, this concealment and tankiness and radar has allowed me to slowly push this flank and essentially deny the enemy team from ever getting back into this game. They would have had to push into B or C or the A cap, which my teammates had a pretty good hold on. So just in my positioning and my ability to stay in open water, protecting a capture zone, protecting an entire side of the map, and they just couldn't deal with me. That's what I think helped win us that game there. This second game though, we're going to talk a little bit more about the armor since it's not going to hold up too well this game. But for starters, we can see that with the dispersion being so bad, we can still do some pretty good damage into this Nevsky. And we're going to be shot at now by quite a few ships. <laughs> I intentionally played some of these games in such a way that I would be getting shot at a lot. 
and we're going to get a ton of potential damage this game and hopefully manage to carry our way through. But the main thing I want to talk about is this 40 millimeter armor nerf is still strong enough to bounce most stuff in the game. And even though we did just take a big hit, it's because of this bow plating section, as you can see right here. If you manage to hit this bow with something that overmatches 25 millimeters, it's going to go right through and do a ton of damage. That's why we had that kind of dubstep low noise, right, where we got a huge hit into us. That's the Thunderer just getting lucky to hit this portion of our ship. You'll notice when we're fully bow in, the superstructure is also incredibly tiny to hit. So if, like I am right now, I'm taking a lot of damage, I could go fully bow in and be even tankier yet. But that's really the weakness of the Petro. This small section of bow that you have to be incredibly lucky to hit at long range, as the Thunderer gets it almost twice in a row. <laughs> Pretty unlucky for me personally. I do consider that a very, very difficult shot to hit, to intentionally aim for that, and to get the right dispersion and RNG to let you pen that. Effectively, it's pretty rare, but that is the one weakness of a bow in Petro. Here we can see the absolute strength of this concealment radar combo. As we're pushing up this Shimakaze, he does land a good torpedo into me, but I know that once I've stopped shooting and there's nobody spotting me from the middle, it has to be a destroyer on the one line. And I can just pop my radar and instantly spot him. That's the issue here. It's just so difficult to deal with this ship. And we've taken a lot of damage. We don't have a lot of HP remaining, but we're still going to push here. That's the crazy thing. The absolute confidence in the tankiness of this ship. They just push around this island on a Nevsky, catch him in a crossfire. This is definitely going to take him out since at close range, our dispersion is pretty good. And now we're stuck bow into a Thunderer with a Shimakaze on our side. Do you think I'm going to die here? Or is this Thunderer going to go down first? I, uh, I think we all know what's probably going to happen here. Of course, I do have a ton of teammates help. So it's going to be this Thunderer going down before me. <laughs> Unfortunately for him, he is broadside on to what looks like to be a Connecticut, which has a lot of really powerful guns. So no, I don't think the damage output of the Petro is all that strong. It's all right. It's just decent damage output for a tier 10 cruiser. For me personally, the issue with this ship is the tankiness. It's the difficulty in dealing with this ship. It's the ability to almost solo push a flank and catch the entire enemy team in a crossfire once you've fully pushed this flank out. You'll notice my teammate teammates have done a good job of taking over the sea cap and getting control of that area. Once we deal with this thunder, the only remaining ships are stuck in the middle of B, caught in a gigantic crossfire. And that's what's going to end up winning us this game. I think the positional advantage the Petro tankiness has allowed in both of these games really has had a massive impact on this game. And you'll notice we're already up over 2 million potential damage. Not an amazing result by any standards. Honestly, Petro can have way better games than this. I took a lot of unnecessary damage, right? Eating a torpedo from the Shibakaze and some other unfortunate damage from this Thunder at long range. But again, for me personally, I would love to see a concealment nerf to the Petro. That's about it. I don't think it needs much else since the guns are pretty inconsistent. As you can see, we're having a tough time dealing damage to this Thunder even though he's showing us more than enough angle for our armor piercing to pen. We had a nice 9,000 damage salvo earlier, and now we're getting stuck down at the two or 3,000 damage, and having that kind of damage every 10 seconds is not overpowered at all. It's just the tankiness I think is too strong on this thing. So the Thunder does end up going down. We use our last heal, and of course, if I has Kuznetsov on this ship, I might have survived just a little bit longer into this game, but Two and a half million potential damage. We'll get a little bit more off this Henry shooting at us before we die is a pretty solid result. And honestly, I really do hope that Wargaming does nerf this ship just a little bit more on its concealment front. And then it probably could be played again in clan battles and Kings of the Sea. And we wouldn't have to have this weird kind of regulation on the rules to say, oh, the Petro and the Kleber aren't allowed in our clan battle sessions at all. I think it would be an interesting ship to have in, if only for the diversity in strategies and comps that it allows for. Although it does, like I said, need those nerfs to concealment to allow people to counter this ship 
a little bit more reasonably. So that's my thoughts on the nerfed so-called Petro Pavlos in update 11.4. Again, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.